Hey everybody, welcome to the pre-show. Good morning everybody. Hello, hello. Writers in the chat room, how you doing man? What's going on? I am clicking. Let's make sure things are working. Clickety clack. Um, hmm. I think I killed Facebook. It's not updating. There it goes, it's just really slow. Very, very slow. How's the audio on your end? Same thing here, slow. Hey everybody, welcome to the pre-show. What is a NeoPixel longboard? Yeah, I know, right? It's like a skateboard with NeoPixels in it. <laughs> this is a bad stream. Warning, this is a bad stream. Greetings from Manchester. Hello, Daniel. Welcome to the show. This hello, is a hello. free show. We'll start in just a second. Minute. Five minutes. Thank you for the comment, Taylor. Loves our content and he's getting a Pi Zero today. Excellent. Great mm -hmm. choice. Pi Zero is awesome. A lot of different projects you can do with it. Yeah, hopefully we don't um, mess up the whole mic situation like we did last week. It's always muted. I had to start it twice. Yeah. Looks smooth, right? No delays. Pretty good, yeah. Hey, Simon is in the chat room. How you doing, buddy? I just saw an email come through for your Patreon, I think. Uh, R17 review. I'm going to check that out after the show. I just saw that hit YouTube as well. Oh, it hit YouTube? Okay. Yep. So anybody want to check that out? Nice little review by Simon over here on the R17. We've got a Pi Zero project planned um, in the next two months or so, I think. It'll be a fun one. Retro game. Hashtag retro. I was about to say the next one I thought was, but nope, it's a feather. Yeah, no, it's a feather. It's an eight box. Good morning, Dennis. Thank you for joining us in the chat room. Daniel, high five. Thanks. Simon's dig digging the video on the longboard. It was a lot of fun. It was inspired by just wanting to go outside because it's summer. Yeah, Who my, wants to go outside in summer? My back still hurts from getting those shots. <laughs> yeah, yeah getting, getting the shots for that was kind of interesting. We tried a lot of different things. Um, we wanted to get uh, drone shots, but that didn't work out because yeah, low lighting with night. a drone is yeah. it's a little bit difficult. We don't have any laws, we don't have any restrictions too much here in our neighborhood, but it was just the shots didn't look good. They were very grainy. So I really wanted to get drone shots, but that didn't work out. And then getting the shots themselves, I used a combination of like a selfie stick and a GoPro, um, which worked out really well, surprisingly really well, especially since the GoPro Hero 5 has built-in camera stabilization. That but worked a that lot. That only works during the day, though. So right. for the other shots, we had to use the heavy 5D. Yeah, so we had our little cage set up where it's just like bars of metal. Um, yeah. And then we just tighten the camera to it and hope for the best. <laughs> Where's the chat? Uh, oh yeah, right. The chat is... Where What's is going on, chat? Rick? He is trying to guess what will be in the next Ada box. I might as well show this off now. <laughs> Neo trucks. <laughs> Pick it up before we're completely sold out of stock on the new Yeah, I got, a, I got a nice demo with the NRI-52. This is a Bluetooth module or Juino compatible, an Adafruit Feather. A lot of nifty things like built-in USB charging. Oh, we got a nice little demo for you guys on that one. Uh, I was talking about what, getting those shots and how fun and hard it was at the same time. <laughs> we tried using a hoverboard and the, the, our hover, it didn't explode, but the battery is like, it can't hold the charge anymore. So we charged it for like an hour or half hour, whatever, and it's like, hey, it's done. It's like, okay, we tried it out. As soon as we stepped out into the concrete, it, it died and Pedro came right off of it. Luckily, he didn't fall, which is nice. <clears throat> yeah, we have experience with uh, hoverboards right just way. shutting off on us. So yeah, I so know how to run hoverboard, off of it. sorry. No bueno. Hey, everybody in the chat room. Greg's in the house. How you doing, Greg? 
Harvey, hello. Taylor, what, what, what's up with the number? Uh, Very interesting. What's that? Ada Box. Ada Box. Yeah, if you cute. could have like a, a hint, what would it be? Uh, anything we say would give it away, so oh, okay. I wouldn't say anything. So I wouldn't say anything. <laughs> Can we give away the color? No. No? <laughs> okay. It's in a box. There's your hint. And it's got number four on it, right? It's got an Adafruit logo on it. Hello from Cleveland. Hello, made in Cleveland. We have a super cute new, um, super cute new uh, mascot for it. Okay, Ada Box Four has a new mascot. You just gave it all away. <laughs> that does not give anything away. Okay, it could be. Anything. I like my 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 tip. My my suggestion is a black box, definitely. Okay, we got one minute. <laughs> yeah. Hello from Italy. Hello, Francisco. Hello. For Francisco. Yeah. Mark is in Belgium. Hello, welcome. We're gonna we're gonna start the show then. Is that cool? We'll start like a minute earlier. Is that good? Yeah, before it's uh, a minute late. <laughs> All right, guys, let's do the show. Hello, hi everybody, welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. I'm Noe Ruiz, designer here at Adafruit. Joining me every week, Mr. Pedro. What's going on everybody? I'm Pedro Ruiz, creative tech here at Adafruit. And every week we come to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right, this is the show we combine 3D printing, DIY electronics, we smash them together to make peanut butter jelly. Inspirational projects for everybody out there. This week's coupon code is NEOTRUCKS. It has a lot to do with this week's project. Trucks, different type of trucks, Neo, Neo Pixels, Neo Pixel trucks, put them together, peanut butter and jelly. That's how we come up with all the discount codes. Just look at what projects and then add whatever. Add peanut butter. Yeah. Makes everything better. <laughs> we got some uh, free deals still going on. If you, give, if you ever want to look at what's available, go to adafruit.com slash free and you can see all the deals. So if you spend $200 or more and you're in the States, you can get free UPS ground shipping. That's pretty cool. We still have same day delivery for uh, special zip codes in the New York City, Manhattan area. Mm -hmm. So you can place an order in the morning and get it the same day. Can Amazon do that? They yeah, probably can. Maybe soon. Maybe soon. Do you guys remember Adafruit Daily? We have a newsletter. It comes out every single day. You have to opt into it. Go to adafruitdaily.com. But we have something new. Something so new that we had to call it new, new, new. <laughs> so this is the new newsletter. And it's basically uh, something that you get once a week, right? So if you want to subscribe to this, you get exclusive content. I'm going to say it's exclusive. This is, you can find this at adafruit.com slash newsletter. Um, subscribe news. today. Yeah. Uh, subscribe to it. I don't know what's in there yet. I haven't seen anything yet. So I'm even, it's even a mystery to us. And we work at Adafruit. I have no idea what this is, but I'm really interested. Next up is, I think that's it. <laughs> that's it. Oh yeah, uh, quick programming note. This is 3D Hangouts, live streamed on Wednesday. We're live streaming on Facebook. Yeah, we're live streaming on Facebook and YouTube <laughs> uh, every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. We've been doing this show for two, three years. It's going right up on three years. Yeah, and episode this is the show that we show off all of our weekly projects. So yeah, so we, we bring all the tips right into and it. things that we learned from the project and share it with you. So this week's project is a nice summer, nice summer project. It is 3D printed truck risers with NeoPix LEDs. So this is actually version three of adding NeoPixels to a skateboard. Yeah, I've been doing this like one of our very first projects, like I said in the video, was adding NeoPixel LED strips to the bottom of the board. The second version, we added NeoPixel rings, uh, and then we had USB charging. We're using a trinket. This time, we're using the Adafruit Feather, so it has built-in USB charging, and it's got the Bluetooth module, so we're using the NRF52 Bluefruit module. Brand, this is brand new. Banking new, hot off the press, yes. or hot off the oven. Usually, this, this, is, this is rare. When we come up with a project, oh my God. 
We just had 40 in stock. Are you kidding? Go <laughs> grab them right now before these are <laughs> If you don't stock. have this, please go ahead and pick one up. You can they get, will be you can get new of- trucks as a, as a coupon code. You can use that in checkout. This is awesome. It has the... It's an Arduino compatible, so you can use Arduino IDE. It has the, the Nordic NRF52 um, chipset. So it's like Bluetooth 4, low energy. And we have some really awesome example codes, which I'm going to show you guys in, in, a, in a minute or two. More awesome what, than what we've More even awesome documented. Yeah. yeah. So there's a, there's a new uh, accompanying color, uh, picker. color picker for the NeoPixels. And we're going to show it to you in a little bit here. But let me walk through the guide real quick. So those are the main things. Uh, the main thing that makes the, the headlights work is a NeoPixel stick. This is eight of them. Only costs six bucks for eight NeoPixels. This is really nice because it has mounting holes and it's super sturdy and secure. We do a lot of cool projects with it. And um, this is just mounted straight onto the, to the enclosure. So let's take a look at the project. And right here. So the overview just kind of goes over some of the guides, the prerequisite guides. We always do that to let you guys know uh, what's included or what you should be looking at. Specifically, if you're new to soldering, we got a nice guide from Colin that talks about how to solder. Um, we have the, the guy that walks you through installing the, uh, br- the board profile for Arduino and the, the library, the Bluefruit NRF52 library. So you can check that out. It's got all a bunch of pinouts and lots of information about the board. Um, so you can check that out. The truck riser pads themselves, uh, just a little information on what they are. They're really useful uh, for preventing wheel bites. They help you when you're pushing, when you're sliding. So we put some electronics into it. <laughs> These are pretty cool. Uh, I just kind of go through some of the parts that you need. You only need three, four parts for this. The microcontroller, the NeoPixels, a battery, and a switch. Not, not, uh, not too much there, which is awesome. I got my, my handy tools. I love using a Panavice and third helping hands. Makes things so much easier. Um, I recommend using them, but you don't have to. Yep. I feel like I'm repeating the script in the video. Uh, as far as screws go, like hardware, you do need some longer hardware. Uh, these are specifically number 1032 screws. I don't know what those are in hex, but there's probably a calculator. And this is a little combination of hex, uh, metric, and imperial. They're all listed here in what they go to. So like the feather, you use M25s for the NeoPixel stick, M25s for the riser pads, 1032s, so on and so forth. Nice little photo of Adabot. I love that. 3D printing section talks about the parts and some things that uh, I didn't talk about in the video I want to talk about now uh, is 3D printed flexible filament, right? So I have these little truck riser pads. This is sort of like the covers. I want to show these off real quick on the overhead. You can. If you can print NinjaFlex or in this case SemiFlex, I definitely recommend printing the cover in SemiFlex. So this is uh, flexible. It's uh, got a, hard, a shore hardness of 98. So it's not like Ninja Flex, which is uh, 80, something like that, 80A. This is 98A, so it's a little bit more rigid, but it's still super flexible. Very nice. Uh, this is all solid in top bottom layers. And then this is just like a perimeter with just the solid infill. So it's a really, really durable part. These little pads are just kind of straight up pads. These go in between the 3D printed part. So if your, if your skate trucks are right here, you put this in between that and then you get this really nice solution here. It minimizes any of the vibrations and it, it probably prolong the durability of, of the 3D printed part. This is printed in ABS, uh, not ABS, this is printed in PLA. So it's got a high infill. For me, 30% is pretty high. So that works out well. It kind of clips in like that. There's the enclosure, let's turn it on. Slide switch, no vibration on the slide switch. No glue at all. I am using mounting tack to hold this battery in place, but while I was writing, um, the battery was vibrating, so I put this blue mounting tack, which is underneath the battery, and now I get no no vibration. So, really, really nice. Um, The wiring is pretty standard and straightforward, just five wires that you have to solder. The battery plugs in directly into the, the JST connector. Works out really well, so. Yeah, check that out. You don't, you don't really need the NinjaFlex. I just did it kind of at the last minute thing and it worked out really well. 
I didn't feel any difference on the board, but I'm sure it'll kind of reduce some of the stress since the, the metal is gonna to be touching this kind of rubbery material instead of this hard plastic. Another part that I didn't really talk about in the video was this guy. This is just like a regular truck riser printed in ABS. This was printed in ABS with a 0.6 nozzle. Something like this on a 0.4 nozzle with a 0.2 layer height would probably take an hour plus. This took 17 minutes. Another great use of uh, a big, bigger nozzle to get fairly big parts in a really short amount of time. So that's awesome, right? This is gonna work really well uh, if, if it's, uh, what, what, it, what you need it for is the back trucks just to kind of elevate it. So you don't have one truck that's taller than the other. That's why uh, I made this little spacer. So that's it really on that end. Here's what a regular truck riser, or riser pad looks like. It looks just like one of these guys, right? So this is one that came with my longboard and I figured I'd make my own and print that because I needed an extra one to go underneath the, pl the plastic part like that. It's a little elongated, but that's to accommodate for the feather because it is a little long. You do have access to the USB port so you can reprogram and recharge the battery. This is exposed, but you could put like a piece of glass or a piece of acrylic here and cover that so you make it a little bit more waterproof. That's it. Standard mounting holes for your modern skate trucks. Cool. So people are asking in the, um, or saying in the chat that you see a, little peop a lot of people breaking these and breaking here much. you are putting plastic on it. So you actually did a ton of testing on these before you moved forward with the project. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I never broke one. Mm -hmm. So, and again, um, kinda... nice emphasis on that. This is PLA. Yeah, it's because they're solid layers. So there's nothing really. You're squishing down on just more plastic. <laughs> yeah, I would print them in ABS though if you're doing uh, skateboard tricks. Yeah, uh, one of our plans is to send a copy of this to the Braille skateboarding YouTube channel, mm -hmm. like uh, Aaron Cairo. I want them to try it out, and I have Kirby actually who's printing it in nylon. Who's going to ship it to us, and then we're going to ship it to. So the guys at Braille Skateboarding, so we'll see uh, how well it works. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully it, uh, it, it holds up. But I'm about like 150 plus pounds and I wasn't able to break it. But again, I'm not doing tricks on it. I'm just cruising around. You can see in the video, I'm a little aggressive on the carving, but it yeah. worked out fine. I was surprised. I was really hope not hoping, but I was really kind of expecting it to break. So I was very kind of cautious and careful when I was first trying it out. And as you saw in the video, I, I didn't have the electronics installed at first. So make sure you kind of test that out before you put a battery in there. Mm -hmm. So. All right, moving on to <laughs> yeah. uh, slice settings, I believe. Yeah, so I listed out the slice settings um, for Simplify 3D using the Flash Forge and Cura on the Ultimaker 2. Just a little bit of a, a, a line width difference there. That's it. So just kind of follow those so you get the right tool paths. Um, for semi-flex, I found uh, this was really useful for me, so I, I, I noted it down. Um, this is a 285 filament diameter for the Ultimaker 3. This is TPU from NinjaFlex called semi-flex. It's a 98A. So, you know, 235 on the extruder temperature. Uh, I slowed it down to 30 millimeters a second on the print and then 90 millimeters on the travel. Retraction distance, retraction was turned on at three millimeters, we, and it produced a really solid part. This is the part, looks really great. So if you're having trouble with your Ultimaker printing uh, Ninja Flex, try out the Semi Flex stuff or the Cheetah stuff. I think it's the same, basically. I have not been able to get regular Ninja Flex to print on the Ultimaker, so I'd probably stick with the Semi Flex or the Cheetah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but so this came look out really how well. clean this looks. You didn't have to do any cleanup except no. um, like this little opening area right here, which yeah. is not too bad. Exactly. This is a solid print and a Far Cry from my Flash Forge. So I tried printing these mm -hmm. with the Flash Forge, and this is what happened. Can you show these off and show? This is printing at 240C with a, with a, um, a speed of 30 millimeters a second. It's typically what you're supposed to do for NinjaFlex, and it came out terrible. It has bad layer adhesion, under extruded. This is printed, this is the third print with an extrusion multiplier of 150% and it still wasn't enough to, to, to give me a solid outline. Another thing I tried, 
was lowering the filament diameter to 1.65 because that's supposed to pump out more filament, right? Mm -hmm. It still didn't work. So I, I kind of gave up on that, I shelved it, and I started printing on the Ultimaker. I started printing on the Type A machine, and those produced some really good results. I'm not sure what's wrong with the, with the Flash Forge. I might need to do an atomic pull. I might need to maybe slow it down even more. A lot of things I could do. I might just go ahead and install the Flex Ion Extruder. It's a it's a extruder that is supposed to print really good Ninja Flex or any Flex. <coughs> so I have a bunch of these fails over and over again. This is the this is actually a fail on the Ultimaker printing too fast. This is printing at 70 millimeters a second. So speed absolutely is a factor, and you have just terrible layer adhesion. But yeah, I just kept trying over and over again with different settings, tweaking multipliers and heat settings and speed settings and just couldn't get it on my flash forge very very great um nice first layer which is very misleading because as soon as it gets on the second layer, i even turned the fan off turned the fan off so it wasn't under cooling and kind of a thing with with uh, the flash forge is i'll tell it to heat up and print at 240c on the extruder but it'll only go up to about 235 even with the fan turned off hmm. so yeah so uh, it's worth mentioning too, showing off your Apple watch band, that the Flash Forge is able to produce really good Ninja Flex results. What is the deal? Yeah. So I wear this every day to remind me it is possible you can get good Ninja Flex prints on the Flash Forge. <laughs> yeah, so for whatever reason, the geometry on this is just something that it mean. doesn't so uh, crazy. like. Yeah. So uh, this is why you see a lot of people getting different types of printers because you know some projects are look perfect, but for, but for I another think, one, it won't I think at the, all. Yeah, I think the end, the, the solution is just to get that ion extruder. It's a specially designed Flex for on. flexible parts. So I just need to do that on my Flash Forge. Yeah. And grab it real quick. I was really surprised though how well this printed out on the on the Type A machine. It looks amazing. It looks really good. A little bit of scars, but this is such a functional part. I cannot break this apart. You can cut it but you cannot rip it or break it apart, which is awesome. Really great use of semi-flex, cheetah flex, whatever flex, mm -hmm. yeah. Did you want to show the ion extruder? Yeah, we can. And Kirby mentioned uh, too that the semi-flex has been replaced by the cheetah okay, brand. Okay, so, so a cheetah. Just be aware of that. Yeah. So this is specialty engineered for printing flexibles. Mm -hmm. kind of interesting little design there. I like the way that this little yeah, brush it's cleans cleaning off. cleaning as it's as it's printing, it's cleaning, yeah. it's self-cleaning. We'll get around to awesome. one of these we days. Need to, we <laughs> really need to do it, because it's like, I have this, I need to do it. Even it has different nozzle sizes, so I can print mm. like, fatter things, quicker mm -hmm. things. It'd be really nice, but that's what happens. Ninja Flex, uh, it's just TPU in general can be very challenging to print, so. Uh, that's why I have some of the settings there outlined, at least for the Ultimaker, I was able to get it really well. So check that out if you are in need of some Ninja Flex settings, here we go. As far as the CAD is, is, is concerned, um, it's a free source file, it's public. Go ahead and download it. Autodesk, you can download it in step files, IGS, STLs for Tinkercad. Modify it if you'd like. Um, I think the only new component I've added that you can reuse in your project is the NeoPixel stick. So you can check out that out if you want precision mounting holes. Check that out. I like how I use the screws. They're McMaster imported. There's like a McMaster plugin that you can insert screws, which is great to so see if it's intersecting anything. So it worked out really well. Now here's the demo part. I'm going to, I'm going to show off this demo here. So the NRF52, that's the, the Feather Blue Fruit. Um, you do need to install a profile for Arduino. So you download that. There is a Python wrapper that you need uh, if you're using OSX or Linux. I think Windows has a different thing. So you have to kind of Depending on your setup, you gotta follow through that. But there is something that isn't documented. If you go to the, the, the Feather guide, it'll run through some of the examples, but there's one that really isn't, uh, that's probably what you're thinking, right? That's the pixel color? No, this is a little bit different. So let's go ahead and show it now. So go ahead and plug that in. So, the, so let's look at this. This is the NR52. Flip on the back. I have a NeoPixel. I just put some mounting tack on it. Let's go ahead and plug it in. All right, so now it's advertising. See the little blue LED? That means it is advertising itself. So I can use the Bluefruit app here. I open that, it's a free download of the App Store. 
it cycle it kind of shows you a list of available Bluetooth devices. You can see my Apple TV, page of Snapchats are right there, his Snap Spectacles. They did a really awesome job. You see they put a little emoji on there. So I'm gonna to connect to it. It's connecting to it. It'll give you a I think a red LED when it's connected. Or no, the bl the blue LED stays solid. So now I'm connected. If you look at the bottom here, there are you can actually slide this and see that there's some extra hidden goodness here. This is the NeoPixels tab. I'm going to click on that. And what you get here is a kind of a grid that you can interact with. So you can actually zoom into this and draw your own pixels. But before we start doing that, let's go ahead and set up our NeoPixels. So there's a little gear icon. Click on that. This is a 1x8, so you can uh, have preset ones or make your own. Now I'm going to hit connect. You get eye blinded, so now it's connected. If we flip it over, you get a brightness slider. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide that down so it's not so eye blinding. That's still really, really bright. And then you can move around in here and then start picking colors. So instead of just picking colors to the whole strip of pixels, you can kind of make your own patterns just by clicking on a color and then clicking on a, uh, on a, on a pixel. So you can set individual pixel colors. So here I have like an Italian flag or whatever, Italy flag, it's pretty cool. So this is really awesome, really simple way to kind of quickly get a NeoPixel pattern. You have all sorts of different colors here. If you want to pick a very specific RGB value, you can do that by clicking on the little icon uh, button there and hit select. Let's say you want to push all of the pixels to one color. This little button over here on where my thumb is, if you click on that, that'll update all the, um, the pixels to whatever color. So this is purple. Kind of hard to get that purple color in there. But anyway, awesome. Um, it is inside of, it's available in the NRF52 library folder, so you do have to kind of dig for it. But this is pretty cool. If anybody has any suggestions or, or, or problems with the UI, let us know. We're constantly trying to improve this app. Not me and Pedro, but K-Town, who works on the project in Antonio. So, uh, and K-Town was like, hey, if you could kind of share this, make a video about it, because it's not documented in, in the guide. So I, f I figured I'd share it with you guys and show you how awesome this is. See how fast that is? Yeah, it's, it's, cool. it's just quick, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of awesome work went into making this. So if you haven't seen this color picker, this is the new color picker. It's, it's, a, it's a great way to stay in shape. <laughs> I don't know. I hope you guys like that. Um, you can pick up the NRF52 right now. It's, is it still in stock? Yeah, it's still in stock. 13 are in stock right now. So if you want to pick one up, please do. Support the show. Support your maker habit. If you haven't worked on any electronics, this is the, the, the best, most awesome, hollow world thing you can possibly do. Just three wires, solder, learn how to solder them into the, the, the board and make something light up. I'm sure you'll get inspired to make something really, really fun. Because mm -hmm. lighting up NeoPixels is like, the best. it's the most yeah. funnest thing. And one thing we forgot to mention is that this is going to change in an upcoming release, so it should be a lot more easier. It'll probably be easier, but always check this. the guide. Uh, when I was setting up my Broad profile and trying to install the Python wrapper using pip install, I ran into some issues. I talked with K-Town and we kind of added these extra notes to, to help people if they get stuck, how, how I got stuck, they'll be able to get that really quick and going because we have that noted now, so. Mm -hmm. Great stuff. Thank you, Kirby, for sharing the link on that. And that's the NR52. Jason is saying, this is cool. I spent so much time programming the pixel sequences and colors and code a few months ago. Yeah, if you've had spent any time trying yeah. to get your colors to go, this is like mind blowing. Yeah, I love just how thing, quick yeah. you're able to set up. A and this works pixel. with lots of things, matrices. Grids, matrices. You can draw pictures. Very very cool. Yeah, so I think uh, one thing I would love to see is some way to do animations or something like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll work on that. That's a really cool thing. But for now, picking colors and making your own patterns is a really useful thing that you can do. Yeah. So check Big that out. Big ups to um, K Town, Tatch, uh, and Antonio from Antonio. the Android side. This works on Android as well. Mm -hmm. It's not just iOS. I think Colin did some work on this as well. So yeah, for the Apple uh, Watch. Nice little um, group effort to get all this coolness into the app. Pick it up.
That's right. And Greg, thank you for putting that. You can actually do over the air firmware updates. That was, that was quite, quite, that is so quite awesome. a challenge and... I think it took like six months to develop this. Yeah, yeah. So there is a, a lot of development. Titanic, windows. you know, and amount of work cheaper. that goes into it's, this. It's $25. The mm -hmm. NRF52 has built-in uh, USB bootloading. So you don't have yes. that extra $5 that you have to pay for the NRF51. Mm -hmm. This is the updated one. Much, much better. Yeah. Excellent. And they're always uh, working on new things. Um, yeah, there's like also behind the scenes. There's of, there's also a example on how to do uh, remote triggering through Bluetooth for for your photo app using yes. your iPhone or Android. Yeah, there's this there's a super special thing that it's only available through Bluetooth four mm -hmm. that lets you do that. So that's really cool. So we're gonna try to do a project with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so much coolness that uh, they're always working on. Yeah, uh, it might take a while to get there, but when it's finished, um, you'll see the uh, cool fruits of all that labor. That's my favorite part of the project <laughs> is that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also a, a NeoPixel Mega Demo sketch that has the Larson scanner, color wipes, rainbows, Robo Cycle, Theater Chaser, and this just kind of runs through it. So if you if you don't want to use the Bluetooth connectivity, you just want it to play some some animations, you can pick up the Adafruit uh, Feather 32U4 Proto Basic. That's five dollars cheaper. You can get that and just use this sketch and just have the animations constantly showing. Scroll through, yeah. Which is helpful. Or hook it up to a button to, where you can just push it to, to advance. Yeah. That's cool. Circuit diagram, again, super easy. Just three wire, three wire connections. Crazy for, easy, yeah. For the NeoPixel, two wires for uh, the slide switch. I, I'm starting to break out, uh, trying to make the assembly a little bit more digestible. So I broke out the slide switch into its own page. So it walks you through how to wire that slide switch. Same thing with the NeoPixels, down to even how long the wires need to be. It's really critical to mm -hmm. make this work really well. Um, you know, orientation, tinning, all that kind of stuff. Installing the electronics. Again, mounting holes, just got to be aware of where your wiring placement is. Um, use the right screws. Um, the mounting tack for the battery, pretty straightforward. Installing the trucks, straightforward as well. I think I broke it, there we go. There we go. Make, yourself, make sure you get yourself like uh, a nice ratchet things you don't want to strip your screws like i did it's just the live and learn thing but there you go that's the whole project in a nutshell mm -hmm. and then one thing you didn't mention on here or even upload was that this can work with a drop oh um, a drop through deck drop yeah. through deck yes it can um you can do that <laughs> there's some extra parts in, in there that you can pick up so if depending on your style of skateboard it should work with all of them hmm. all right that's this week's project i hope you guys like it it was a lot of fun uh, I'm not like a legit skateboarder or anything like that. I just like to go outside every now and then. And when I do, I'd like to have a project to, to work on. So yeah. it was a good combination of the two. Super cool, super bright. We'll let you see any crazy rock or obstacle that's yeah. in the road while you're skating. And people at see night. me, which is great because they yeah, won't run yeah, me over. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's good. Running at nighttime is, is the right time. And I like how compressed it is, like nice and compact. You don't have to add any um, like Extra strips yeah. or clips or anything like that. Yeah. It's Pretty just. Elegant. Nicely compact. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, Greg's saying if you put the phone to feather in there, you can control it via SMS. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. All right. Well, that's this week's project. Let me know what you guys think about it. And if you build one, please share it with us. It'd be really cool to see. How about what's the next week's project? Real quick, we can share with you what Pedro's been cooking up here. It has to do with delicious pie. Super simple, all-in-one built-in, little seven inch. Um, it could be used either with a Raspberry Pi or what I'm doing here. I am using it as a all-in-one mini PC. The thing that's uh, updated on this is all of the um, screws. Instead of using so many, I'm opted out to use the very cool little snap together nubs that Noah came up with. You have a whole layer by layer tutorial on that and on how to use that. Super simple circuit, but the um, hero of this project is these ribbon connector HDMI um, connections and the cable. So instead of having like this huge bulky HDMI cable for hooking everything up, we have these slim, flexible, bendable little cables that you can attach uh, either Raspberry Pi or like I said, a little full blown PC inside here. And then we're using the seven inch backpack 
display, which has the HMI drivers on the back of the screen on here. So it's super mm -hmm. easy to um, use. And then we have a power boost to um, recharge the battery for this guy. So we'll talk more about that yeah. next week. Awesome. This is great. It's a great update to sort of a classic useful project. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of use cases where people need a Pi, a screen, and a battery. Or if you want to just use it as a monitor for your camcorder, you can do that. You have a quarter 20, a uh, little insert on the bottom there. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I just, I just like the, the, the kind of refinement of this project where you're not having to use so many screws. Yeah. And the use of those screws is actually hindering how I would mount the screen inside there. So eliminated. George is asking what TFT that is. If you search for HDMI backpack on the Adafruit Shore, you'll see you'll have two options. You have a five inch and a seven inch. Uh, so it's a got a whopping inch. resolution of 800 by 480. It has the built-in driver. It, it has, you know, hardware accelerated with the HDMI right on there. Works really well. It's got mounting tabs on the sides. So you can mount it to anything you yeah. want. Works really good for Raspberry Pi. That's mainly what we got it for. But as, a, as an external monitor for your device, it works really mm -hmm. well too. Again, this is like the hero of this. Oh, yeah, no, this thing's <laughs> how small. Yeah, because otherwise you'd have this giant thing sticking out, which we showed you a couple of shows ago, just how massive yeah, they're pretty uh, big. the HDMI connectors can be. Mm -hmm. So hopefully but we'll we talk about this more soon. next week. Yay. Yeah, well, the little pie would definitely be uh, really cool. Yeah, especially that's since. That's actually going to be my next project. Well, not next project, but two, After projects, the box, two yeah. projects down the line. Yeah, yeah you'll be using the. Um, what is it, TPF 401? Yeah, the display so driver. To, it's uh, the same driver in here. It's just broken out and it broke out in a, in a mm -hmm. board. Yeah. So. so we'll talk about this more next yeah. week. Cool. Good job. New Pixel Trucks. If there's anything here that you want to pick up, make sure you use Neo Trucks. Save some monies. Okay. That's what we're prototyping. Shop Talk is next. So you kind of already went over it with the super cool NRF52 NeoPixel yeah, demo get? there. Um, switch? Let's see, community makes. Oh, that's not shop talk, is it? Mm. it, it it's under the shop talk. Last week okay. we talked about this uh, Nintendo Switch uh, ergonomical grip for the, the Joy-Cons. And uh, this week we have it working with light pipes. Yeah, so this is designed by the very awesome Alex Hatch who made this super ergonomical um, Joy-Con connector, yeah. or grip. Mm -hmm. And he designed it to be used with light pipes. So we're using the Tallman T-Glaze, which has really cool light pipe um, characteristics. Yeah. So he recommends actually uh, melting these, but as you can, might have seen in the video, I just cut these down to size. Mm -hmm. and you can see that the uh, fit in there pretty nice. Uh, so what it does is actually move the LED status over so you can actually still see it. So you can see it there blinking away. And then what button do I press? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all those work pretty good. Yeah. You turned the TV on. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, so a lot of the grips that are on, you know, on some of the, the STL sites always omit having, you know, they'll cut off the LED status for that. Mm -hmm. This is a great way to continue to see what the status indicator is for all the LEDs while having a very ergonomical yeah. um, controller grip. Yeah. Now, some, some folks might think like, well, maybe you can dual extrude this. You probably could, but there's some, some kind of caveats that you can do with that. Mm -hmm. it, it really depends on, on how the material is laid down. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like light piping only works if, if your layers are staggered on top of each other, not vertically, right? Uh, have not done too many tests with to, it, so... Like, if you go to Tallman's website, there's a guide on how to do proper light pipes, mm. like with actual 3D printing and not just the filament piece. Mm, but this okay. is awesome. Not everybody has a dual extruder. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the, the kind of extra time added to dual extruding this would probably be a little bit. So this is a really easy solution to kind of get that and just use the filament as itself as an insert. So I think that works really well. Very cool. Sweet, so check that out. Um, it is on my manufacturer. If you do have a console and you want to check this out. Again, it's by Alex Hatch. Very minimal cleanup, just the bottom there that we had to use rafts and supports for. Mm -hmm. And you just sand that down. And then I think one of these sides uh, just needed a little bit of sanding down. And you can see all the different cool patterns that you're able to yeah. um, use. Those are really popping. Yeah. You put some decals on it, it looks super fresh. Yeah, super cool. Yeah. So definitely check that out if you are and look out for a new grip for <laughs> yeah. your Nintendo Switch.
Very cool. It's awesome. Next up, we got in, we got a, a collaboration project here. It's really a contest. Formlabs Awards, powered by Pinshape. So check this out if you're looking to, um, for some new contests to win some awesome prizes, like a, a subscription or a, a premium license to, to SolidWorks, a ZBrush license. You can win a 16-inch uh, Wacom Cintiq Pro. Uh, and, and also $150 Adafruit gift card, $150 3D Hubs gift card. That's pretty cool. Um, check out all the details and stuff. We'll have it linked below. We're one of the sponsors, so check that out. Pinshape is always doing some awesome community projects and community uh, contests, rather. So check them out. Okay. I guess it's time for community makes real quick. I just have a couple ones. So last week's Pedro, uh, last week project was of course the, the Guardian Sword from Zelda Breath of the Wild. And a lot of people were asking, can you cut it up and make it, you know, work on my smaller printer? Because we print it on a huge printer, right? So this awesome person here on Thingiverse made this as a remix, took the Fusion 360 files and then added the, Jonathan, Jonathan Oxford on, on Thingiverse, chopped this up for a smaller printer. So. This is this is what open source is all about, man. It's taking this and like making work. Yeah, offloading the uh, the the labor for this. Um, yeah, you just, just because it is kind of time consuming when you have to you know, mm -hmm. get everything else done. So huge ups, and he also cut apart some of the the um, sections that I didn't even use in the print, mm -hmm. like the little handle um, yeah, the details. Little details. Yeah, so this is great. Very awesome. Awesome job. A lot of comments too. People are really really digging it. So Super cool, yeah, if awesome. you guys end up making one, definitely post it as a make. Yeah, and, and check we'll out the remix it. because this will probably fit on your bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Very right, cool. Cool. We'll have this linked below in the show notes and on tomorrow's blog post. Very cool. Good stuff. Some other things. Um, we now are Tom White, or better, no better known as Bartle Beats, has uh, started uploading more and more of his music uh, to the Adafruit uh, SoundCloud account. So if you want to check out the, the, the music that we use at Adafruit, you can check out soundcloud.com slash Adafruit. I'm gonna start uploading my own stuff too, because I have my own stuff. Um, and yeah, we have some awesome newsletter, uh, newsletters, <laughs> um, awesome voicemails as well. So we can, you can call in the show, own bit stab, and leave a lovely message. And Lamar and Phil have been playing them back now. They got a nice backlog of them. So very, very f fun to hear those. And I wanna shout out uh, to Lady Cammy on Instagram, or Charlene, she is, Making a lot of cool cosplay stuff. I love her account, it's, it's really great. She's showing a lot of work progress, a lot of 3D printing, electronics, and cosplay. So if you're into that, right, cool. check her out. Her latest project that she's working on is this cool little thing here. So check that out. Look how small and compact this is. I know, this is awesome. It's got the slide switch thing going on. Very cool. Very, very awesome. So check her out on Instagram. Good vibes. And I think that's it for the show. Yeah, got a couple of Q&A, you want to okay. jump into that? Let me, let me jump into that. So earlier in the show, um, Kirby posted a link to the new Monoprice Mini Delta, and writers asking what would be a better first printer. I uh, don't have any experience with the Deltas, but, um, or their Delta, but the Mono, the original one might be a little bit better just because of the way that the build area for Delta printers is a little weird. It's okay. like a hexagon type shape, oh, so yeah. okay. um, they're more primarily uh, used for like taller objects. So yeah. um, it's just different, you know, geometries. And as you've seen with the Ninja Flex thing, um, not everything is going to print on um, just one printer. So I'd probably go with the uh, the the first one, not the Delta, as Beyond your first Delta? one. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, Doctor Packet is saying that maybe it would be better for the um, mini PC if the Pi connector ribbon cables were inside mm. of it yeah, instead. Yeah, any, any choice design decisions on I that? I didn't want to make this so thick. Oh, I did try that out. If you enclose the whole thing. If yeah. you enclose the whole thing, even if it's a rasp the Raspberry Pi actually is going to be thicker because of the USB Ethernet. cables and the Ethernet. Yeah. yeah. So that's the game Plus that you, you have... always have to play. Mm. How thick do I want this? And that increases the print time drastically. So yeah. I chose to have it on the outside, have uh, better access to it, and to make the enclosure seem like it's smaller. And then yeah. you're not, you know, squishing everything inside there. Okay. And, uh, 
just making everything thicker gotcha. than it really needs to be. Good quality and speed for... Uh, Raul, uh, Raul or, or Raul? It's like Paul Raul. Is, is saying um, he needs uh, 50 pieces for a small production batch. Which picture would you recommend? Good quality and speed for this, for PLA. Also mm. double color and extruder. Mm. Hmm. Probably the Ultimaker 3, I would say. It's a little bit more... Um, yeah, it depends on your price range. Um, if you're looking for something like an entry printer, but that can have a pretty decent build volume, why not go with the Prusa i3? A lot of folks are having good experiences with it. Uh, you just have to get the dual extruder version of it, or you have to add that on? I don't think he needs dual extrusion. Uh, it says right here, also oh. double color dual oh, right. extruder. Oh, oops, I missed that. So either the Sigma, uh, BCN, uh, or the Flash Forge, if you're the, not printing Ninja Flex like all the time. Uh, the dual extrusion on that, it's going to be, you know, it's not going to be the cleanest, okay, but... So if you want good dual extrusion, yeah. Yeah. You, you might want to go with the Sigma. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Haha. <laughs> the packet is saying, yeah, that uh, Cintiq at Wacom Pro is a... Uh, yeah, they got some great prizes. Nice prize. <clears throat> Check that out. I'll have it linked. Internet clock, someone wants to build an internet clock. Yeah, just uh, look for uh, internet clock on the learn page. Yeah, there's a lot of great um, clock projects. You can check it out on the Adafruit learning <clears throat> system. Uh, I think we already answered this, but Ryder was asking about the Blue Fruit app for Android. Yes, it does exist. Mm -hmm. Check it out, leave a good review if you like it. Yeah, so, it has uh, its own, uh, Adafruit Blue Fruit Connect has its own learning guide, so you can check that out. Mm -hmm. It has all the links and stuff because the app links are a little bit long. Okay. I want to say I think that's about it. Cool. Well, I want to run through some cool things. I got a John Park logo. Check out John Park's uh, playlist on the Adafruit channel. A lot of awesome projects dropping. Uh, Tony D's desk was actually, there was one last night actually on this PyCon because oh. he's going to be at the uh, oh, Python right. conference. So he's going to that. He has a talk. Check it out. He, he likes to stream a lot on Twitch and then uploads it later to YouTube. Desk of Late Data has been happening a lot. They just kind of got a new setup in mm -hmm. the office, which is really great. Been enjoying those. And I think that's it. <laughs> Colin's still working on some more Colin's lab. Yeah. But I think right now he's finishing up a new Circuit, circuit playground, playground episode. Yeah. Cool. So be on well, the lookout for that. If you guys want to support the show and support your maker habits, please pick something up. I think the thing is still in stock. Let me refresh real quick. Come on, refresh. 13 in stock. Oh, come on, guys. <laughs> Everybody wanted to buy one. Yeah. I already did. They already did, yeah. <laughs> Great. I mean, there were 40 in stock before we started the show. Thank you, guys, for supporting us on the show. It was awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I got some Laravel layers planned for CNC milling. That's coming up in the next week or so. Um, got a lot of backlog of projects to work on, so. We'll get there. Thank you guys so much for joining us on the live show. It's been a lot of fun. We're going to see you guys later tonight. Do you know why? Because we have a show and tell tonight. If you want to share your projects with us, we really encourage you to do. Check out the show and tell show on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You should be able to just drop a comment right on that video and Phil will send you an invite. We'll send you the link. Yeah, that's how we do it now. We wait and then if nobody's there, we pop the link in, yeah. in, the, in the YouTube chat. And then right after that, Ask an Engineer, special guest. We got Pyramoni in the office. That is awesome. All the way from the UK. It's going to be Very a lot cool. of fun tonight. We so got I hope Paul you guys are there with us. We got Paul. Uh, who else? We uh, got monkeys, robots, <laughs> and ninjas. <laughs> Pyramoni. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. We will see you next week. <clears throat> My voice is gone. <laughs> Bye, guys. See you guys. <laughs>
Thank you.